What's up? It's Wizard Fu coming at you with another video in the Low Dragger 5 vs. 5 game development series. What I'm working on now is the AI system and getting it to Pathfind. My next goal is to make the um the builder be able to build a bridge over the over the water and then switch to Arch Ragger and um, go steal the other team's lodestone. So in order to do that, with these custom lanes being carved in the matches, it's requiring um, pathfinding. So let's check this out. All right, I'm gonna speed up time a little bit. So these guys go off and they are carving some lanes. Whoa, I'm getting stuck. Let's actually put time back to normal. There we go. This is a lot more feasible. Okay, these guys are carved a really weird path. But they make it here and they... Oh, they're all stuck on each other. I've got the random numbers set to a certain um, seed so that it all they always tend to do the same thing each time. Um, but let's see if this guy's back yet. He should be back soon. He went up and carved a path this way. I think he's going to be coming back down one of these paths soon. Where'd he go? Did he already build a bridge? No? There he is. Okay, he's become a roll. Uh... Wait, roll this seek? This just all went wrong. Well, shoot. <laughs> oh, well. Well, so the builder was supposed to pathfind his way up here. Maybe because I walked to the right and changed the random numbers or something. But anyways, they usually come up here. They pathfind their way up here and build a bridge. That's what I wanted to show you. But I guess we'll have to save it for next video. But let's look at the code anyways. eh? The code is mostly a part of KitFu now called Pathfinder. Um, in the past, I used to use pathfinding for a class. For example, in Songbringer, um, each area of Songbringer, each screen, if you will, you could walk off the screen to the right, left, up, down, and go to another screen. So pathfinding um, had to be per area. So the area would look at the rocks and trees and things that it had to navigate around, and it would use that for pathfinding. But the problem was I made it so that it, you had to subclass Pathfinder in area, for example. This is completely independent now. This this Pathfinder for KidFu, um, you actually, what you do is you install functions for um, getting the width, getting the height, checking if an, a point is open, and checking the cost of going in a certain direction. Um, so those are basically installed by the collision system. Collision system sets that up. <clears throat> Here's where it creates a pathfinder, basically. It creates a pathfinder with all those functions. Um, we're referencing some static functions here. Oh, shoot, these should all be static. So that the linker doesn't try and put them, put them elsewhere or allow them to be linked elsewhere. <clears throat> so basically, pathfind get height, get width, chain returns the grid size, and then pathfind is open takes a V3 position, converts it to the grid position. So converting um, to the grid basically divides by the grid element size. And then it checks the mask and calls the collision system to see if there is a collision at that point where it's trying to pathfind. So the pathfinder uses all these functions. Let's go to the pathfinder's actual code. Um, pathfinder uses a priority queue. If you're interested in how I implemented pathfinding, there, here's some links to where I um, where I learned and wrote most of this based on some code there. Made it my own style though. So anyways, um, here's where it constructs a pathfinder with all those functions. Getting a path is simply calling pathfinder pathfind and then returning the walking the return path to go from the goal back to the position, creating a path basically in reverse. We create the path in reverse and then walk it in reverse walk it straight to turn it, I don't know, you get the point. 
Pathfind uses a priority queue frontier to do A star pathfinding, and I'm not going to go into too much detail. You can read those links if you want to learn, but this is how it all works. It, it basically works by calculating the cost of a certain move and making smart moves until it finds the shortest path from a point to another point. And then there's also some convenience methods and log functions. But that's how it all works. And then the AI, let's go look at the bot's AI for how it actually um, implements its pathfinding. When it wants to go target the bridge, when it's uh, turns into when an, when the bot AI turns into role list, it goes into text. Oh, I can become builder now. So it goes targets the building for builder, and then after it becomes the builder, it can target the nearest lane complete, and then set a path towards that target. So path target. Let's go actually look at that behavior. Path target. This looks at the entity's current target and then calls that collision system pathfind from the entity's current position to its target position and stores all those results in the AI path. And that's all. That's all really it really is to it. Um, if there's all one more thing, there's dir path. Dir path basically looks at um, it takes an average of a certain number of positions, it's usually one or two actually. It's really like, uh, yeah, here's the default is one. Max count is defaults to one. So you would really only take a look, a look at the very first position in most cases. It basically takes, um, it, it sums up all those deltas of, of the entity's current position to the path position and then sums them up and divides or averages them basically and then sets a compass direction based on that. Um, let's see if we can actually get it to go one. We'll do. We'll see one more try. I'll just stay at the home screen, but we'll speed up time. We should see one of these guys come back, and once he comes back, I'll I'll uh, slow down time a lot, and we can watch him walk his current AI path, so you can see how this all fits together and how it works. Here we go. Okay, there he is. There, there's his path. He's following his path, right? He's going. He's basically going to each one of these little green diamonds. There's a lot wrong with it at this point. He kind of has. He sets up a bunch of momentum and overshoots his position sometimes. And also, there's a problem with the movement system where if you're actually dragging against a wall, you're moving a lot slower for some reason. Um, and also, his movement is entirely compass direction based. So it'd be better if it were vector based so you could actually just set any 360 degree vector. So isn't that cool? He built a bridge and I can walk across it, fight enemies, whatever. So there you have it. AI pathfinding started. This is pretty important because there's so many little trees that you need pathfinding to be able to actually get test out how this gameplay is going to feel, how it's going to work. My goal soon is to have it so there's two teams of five you can play. Um, an actual game of Load Ragger soon. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.